Good morning. John chapter 6 today. Gotta find it first. It's before Acts. Backing up a little bit here. So, we concluded yesterday with Jesus uh, just witnessing to who he is and testifying of all these things. He had been doing miracles. He'd been doing a bunch of stuff. And so now we get to get into uh, the feeding of the 5,000. And so chapter 6, verse 1, it says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Um, since you're watching this, you're stuck with me, and I like nerdy facts. So the Sea of Galilee... That would be a later Greek name for the sea. And that was the common name in the New Testament, where obviously a lot of the New Testament takes place around the Sea of Galilee. So as a Christian, we're probably most familiar with that name. There was a major city on that lake, and it was Tiberias. And Tiberias really doesn't get a, a whole lot of attention in the Gospels, but it was a major, major city. And so often, if you go to Israel, uh, very often you will stay in Tiberias. Uh, it is the major city on the lake today as far as modern. And there's other places you can stay in the kibbutzes, but Tiberias is where you'll probably stay. And it also has the name of Gennesaret or Kinneret. And it kind of depends on how you pronounce it and how it's translated from the Hebrew. But the Hebrew word, it's the word for a harp. And if you look at the shape of the, of the lake, it kind of has a shape of a harp, a small harp. And so lots of different names for this sea. So it's Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, named after Caesar Tiberius, and the city that was placed there named after him. Then a great multitude followed him, Jesus, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now, the Passover feast was near. And then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now, um, we're missing a little bit of the story. And that's the beautiful thing about the Gospels, is we have these different accounts where we can piece them together and get a full story. And so, I like to flip back to Mark. Went too far. Hit Matthew. Um, chapter 6. And just to add a little bit of details into what we missed, um, because it talks about the miracles and people were gathering. Uh, and then it says in verse uh, 31, or let's see here. Yeah, 31 of Mark 6. He said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there are many coming and going and they didn't even have time to eat. So they deserted, departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them, and came together to him. And verse 34 is a key one. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Now piecing that into John few things. One more nerdy fact. Um, I was really, I don't know, I was blessed by this. So I've been to Israel three times so far. And this last trip, um, when we were there, we were up in the northern area and we were uh, around Tegba. Tegba is the name of the place where there is a Catholic church and it is where they uh, it's where Peter was supposed to be restored at the end of John. We'll get there at the very end. And it's also supposed to be the place where the feeding the 5,000 took place. But I was talking with our guide, as I talked with guides in the past, and I said that I had an issue with this because if you read the accounts later on when they return, they have to go across the lake, and the Gospels are very clear. It talks about, about three and a half miles halfway across, very specific wording. And it talks about them going across the lake, headed back to Bethsaida and Capernaum. And those are both on the north side of the lake. And it says here that they went to a deserted part of the lake. So I told them, I really believe 
that they would have headed to the southeast side of the lake, and that's probably where the Feeding the 5,000 was. And what was cool was that just months before this recent trip, they found an ancient Byzantine church that was built near the ancient city of Hippo, which was one of the cities of the Decapolis. We hear about the Decapolis in the Gospels, and Jesus went around the Decapolis and whatnot. And so there they found an ancient church, and on the floor of the church was a mosaic with the loaves of bread and the fish. And they believe that that church was placed there because the Byzantines believed that was where the miracle took place. So anyway, so he's probably on the southeast side of the lake. They sailed off because they had been doing so much ministry, they needed a break. And it's a healthy and wise thing to know when you need a break. God doesn't rest, but man has to rest. People have to rest. I would also caution, though, that sometimes we convince ourselves we need a break, we need a this and that, and sometimes we need to suck it up and keep going hard. It's, it's, it's a real discerning thing, but it is wise that sometimes you need to get away. I think John Course is the one who puts it, sometimes we need to come apart, which is the wording in the authorized version there in Mark, come apart lest you fall apart. And so they go to get away and get a break. And while they're away, though, People see their boats, and they see where they're headed, so the people just start running around the lake. And it's a small enough lake. I mean, if you really get going quick, they could theoretically run from Tiberias and whatnot around the lake and over and get over to that other side, and they beat Jesus there. And so when they get there, what does Jesus do? He sees them as sheep without a shepherd. And so he has compassion on them, and so he starts by feeding them. And he feeds them not with bread and fish, which will come later, but it says he teaches them. And I think that's why there's such a big emphasis in so many churches, as there should be, on teaching. That we need to teach people who are hungry. You see, little sheep without a shepherd, they'll go off and they'll eat anything. They don't know what's good and what's bad, and they need someone who can teach them what is good. And often people think what they want is excitement, or they think they want this, or they think they want that. But truly, as Jesus tells Satan, quoting from Deuteronomy, right, that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, that really, this is the food we need. This is the spiritual food we need to grow up big and strong. And so Jesus sees them as sheep without a shepherd, and he has compassion on them. And I'll tell you what, Jesus is the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, our over-shepherd as I'm like an under-shepherd. And an emphasis is this, for all of us, that so often we can get frustrated with other people. We can see other believers acting immaturely, saying things they should not, getting in the flesh, getting frustrated, getting angry, getting cocky and arrogant, getting however it may be, and I'm sure the disciples wanted to just send them away, as they'll say later on when the people get hungry, hungry. But Jesus has compassion. And every time he sees someone acting immaturely, he sees it as that. This isn't someone who needs a this or a that. It's someone who needs to be taught. They need to be fed so that they can grow up and mature. And so it reminds me of Galatians 6, where it tells us we need to bear with each other's burdens. Now, sometimes these burdens are sin. Sometimes these burdens are actual physical needs of this earth. But many times, I believe the greatest burdens that we need to bear with our brothers is their own spiritual immaturity. Now, this is not something we should ever get cocky about and I'm more mature and they're less mature because if at any moment we start thinking, well, I'm more mature, that's a sign of immaturity. Because that's the idea is I think as we grow in maturity as a Christian, we realize how little of it is us and how much of it is God. And if at any moment it becomes an arrogant thing, then we know that we're lacking in maturity because we haven't received that humility that comes with growth. I think as you grow more, the more humble you truly become and you realize, man, I'm just along for the ride and God is blessing me every step of the way. And so I'm gonna bear with these other sheep because they're getting frustrated. COVID's driving some people crazy. And you know what? We just got to bear with them. 
They probably don't need a rebuke right now, and they probably don't need to be, you know, stuff shoved down their throats. You just gotta, I'm gonna bear with these people because they're immature, and God has matured me. Thank God, and I'm just gonna have to stick it out and keep teaching, feeding these sheep so that they can be strong and be able to take care of themselves and feed themselves on their own. And so we didn't make it all that far in John chapter six, but you know, there's some good stuff there. And so we see what happens. They go away, they try and get away, but it doesn't work out for them. It ends up the people follow, but Jesus doesn't get frustrated. He is compassionate and he teaches them. He feeds their souls, the thing that needs the feeding the most. Looks like on Monday, we'll get back together and we'll see then how Jesus accomplishes filling their bellies. And then after a little walking on water, maybe by Tuesday or probably Wednesday or Thursday, we'll learn more about how these people come for more food for their bellies and Jesus denies them. That's another important thing is, you know, Jesus is gonna say, no, 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 no. I fed your bellies once, but really, I'm ultimately here for your souls. And if you're not interested in that, well, your belly's gonna go hungry too. Lots of lessons we can glean from Jesus and they're just so hard to apply sometimes because we do not have that wisdom and tactfulness that Jesus Christ had. But we can pray and grow and learn so we can do as best as we can to apply that knowledge to our everyday lives. God bless you guys. See you guys on Monday.